the mic? Hey, let's welcome back Santiago Rizzo. Tim wanted to write a book about our story when I was 21 and just graduated from college. And uh, I was really insecure at the time and was acting, and that was my path to grace. And I told him to write a script. So he wrote the first draft of the script. Uh, I don't know, that was 15 years ago. And um, we worked on it. And when he had pancreatic cancer, I went back home. I left uh, Wall Street. And, um, <coughs> and uh, uh, worked on our house together, and then um, we worked on the script together. And right before he died, I promised him I'd make this movie in his honor. And that was a promise I was not willing to break, because he never broke a promise to me. And um, three years later, I went back to Wall Street and launched my own hedge fund uh, with my old boss's capital. He cheated me, and I couldn't do it anymore. And I had a lot of pain. I was trying to cover it up. And I've said this before, but it was like uh, I had to strip myself of the warm blankets in order to recognize I was standing in cold shadows still. And only then could I go back and walk into the sunlight. And uh, it was a very painful process, but I had to let go of that safety. And uh, went to LA and tried to get um, some producers to help me with this. And I never thought I'd direct it. So I never had any intention to direct it because I've never directed anything in my life. And uh, uh, it was exactly as it's meant to be. I was forced to direct and produce it, and I sold the house, and uh, brought some amazing talent, and uh, through a lot of love, to, uh, Florian Stadler, come up here. Florian, our <laughs> uh, Florian makes a lot of money shooting commercials, and he did this in New York. <laughs> We had a lot of artists come through and support this, and uh, I'm really, 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 really appreciative of Slam Dance, who is staying with integrity with the art, who supported our art. It's really tough right now with all the stock market at a record high and corporate sponsorships at these festivals, and everybody's selling out, to be honest. This is my opinion and my truth. And, um, and uh, you know, it's really difficult for an artist to stay independent. This is why there's street art. This is why people are out there putting up their own ads instead of, you know, cigarette companies paying to create cancer. Um, and we need to stay independent of the money because the money is oftentimes the greatest shadow. Mm. So with that, you know, uh, that's how it came about. And um, yeah, that's the story. So at and, I, and I hope to, I really hope to inspire, um, I really hope to inspire Hollywood I hope to inspire Wall Street. I had a lot to give back. I've been very blessed. I've been very fortunate. My best friend was Toby Eagle. He was black, uh, and he was shot and killed seven years ago. Uh, Diego's character is based off of, inspired by Toby. I was very fortunate uh, because of the way I looked. I was able to flow into different circles later on in life that my friend Toby Questions. So, uh, I'll just ask one more. In terms of the act, when did you guys come on board? And did you guys come on board around the same time? Uh, did you kind of, were you able to like live with this script and, and, and uh, have like prep time or was it a very fast turnaround? 
let me just start this off by saying it was very difficult to get a casting director because I didn't have experience. And I convinced Deborah Dion to help me at least just find a kid. Because the script was rejected everywhere because nobody thought a kid could play this role, yet alone carry the film, yet alone make money off of it because it's a child unknown. What they didn't understand is it's about child abuse, so it had to be a pre-puberty child because abuse as adults later on is a result of child abuse. So you have to fix child abuse first and go into those shadows before you can deal with the other shadows that happen in society. And so we <coughs> spent a month and a half searching for a kid. She just agreed to do just a kid. And that's how we found Greg. We can talk about the casting experience. Um, I remember auditioning. Uh, and then I wasn't officially booked yet, but I remember Santi still had me come in and read, um, read with uh, other people growing up for Tim's role. And, um, you know, Dash, Dash was obviously the best one, the best fit in the body and the character. Um, but to How many honest, times did you come in? I went in? I went in probably about like eight times, eight, nine times. Wow. He came to my house, we had dinner. Um, he talked to my parents about the film to make sure they were supportive and okay with me playing a kind of character like that. Um, and of course my parents were extremely supportive of it. Um, and the process was, uh, it, was, it didn't feel too pressured for me, even though now I re go back to the memories. Uh, all I, I, I remember on set, it was, it was very pressured. We didn't have much time, because I was a child <laughs> actor, and I only had like eight hours to work on set, um, which not anymore, because you know I, I'm done with high school. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just for any directors out there, don't want to ask me to say. Um, uh, yeah, so and yeah, we, that was the process. And I went to juvenile halls in the Bay Area. We went to a lot of child welfare agencies to try and find a kid, and Greg is like a real actor, so he, Thank you. he, he actually, <laughs> like I mean, the kid actually studied Meisner and Stanislavski, and he was able to uh, listen really, really well, and uh, he, no other kid, I'm, and actually Deborah Dion said that when we first saw him, she said, that's the kid you're gonna end up casting, I was like, eh, he has swag, I was like, eh, I don't know yet, and uh, you know, she was right. It was pretty funny, uh, I remember actually the people that were auditioning for uh, your role, um, I was outside with him and Santi had me uh, practice with him before we went in. And it was funny because every time there was a new person, the first thing I would ask him is, what, te what technique did you study? Because I was so into like acting technique and all, but yeah, Dash, Dash just killed it. So, and then after that, after uh, Deborah saw how I worked with the, with the kids, and a lot of parents didn't want to bring their kid in for the role, they just all denied it. Or a lot, like half of them said no to bringing their kid in. Um, I think after that, some of the managers started calling Deborah and saying, you gotta get us this, you know, our actor this role, which made her feel more comfortable. And eventually we got Dash through that, and then with Dash, you know, we got <laughs> Betsy, with Betsy we got Lou, and that's kind of how it happened. But it took a two month process uh, to get that trust. I don't know if you want to talk about um, <laughs> uh, The process, um, look, I read the script and it, and it was, as you can, I mean, I would still get emotional watching it, and um, and uh, it was a really challenging character that I knew I was going to have to try to fill this man's shoes. That was everything to so many people, especially this man. And um, I told Santi, "I got you." I said, "I got you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know." And they, I, I did the best I could. <laughs> but. Uh, Let's go to some. Let's go to some questions. Yes. Um, as a Berkeley resident who drives past Tim's Field like every day, and also having worked at uh, Willard Middle for a couple of years, this film especially hit home for me. I want to know for each of you what was the most difficult scene to shoot and why. Um. I yeah, it's hard to to pick which one. Um, you know, the, like you said, with the, the, like every member, there's a lot of time constraint. Obviously, um, we were always in a rush because we only had eight hours a day with, yeah, with Greg. Not and anymore. So, <laughs> it's hard to pick one, uh, but. Uh, I don't know if you noticed uh, later on at the, the end, we, we, we did a reshoot, and I didn't have that hair anymore, so I had to put extensions in. And that was a difficult process. <laughs> um, I think 
for me, the hardest uh, scene, I don't have specific ones, but I think the ones that were toward my later time, like whenever I had to finish off the day because I couldn't work any more hours, um, because the set teacher, obviously, like, she had to do her job, and um, she gave us kind of a hard time, and we still needed to shoot a few more scenes, so I felt that um, I had takes. a few more takes, yeah. She and was I, tough. Yeah, she was tough. It was actually a different um, set teachers, remember, yeah. And each of them were, I mean, they, it was it's their job to do that. Um, so I just felt not really pressured, but I felt like I, I had to get it in like the first few takes. So I would take say actor. the the hardest take, the hardest uh, uh, every time the studio teacher would pull him when I needed two more <laughs> takes. I mean, I know the difference in a few scenes that would have made a big difference because I didn't get to get to take three or take four, and the frustration to be paying someone to help out with this story, and Greg wasn't tired. And just to like the rules that are it, it set, which I understand why, because nobody wants to abuse a child. But being that I live in abuse and I'm getting abused by the police there, <laughs> not to help us get the the takes that we need, that was incredibly frustrating. The abuse scenes were also very difficult because I needed to push intensity, and then of course everybody's looking at me because of course I grew up from abuse, therefore most people who grew up from abuse become abusive, so everybody's looking at me as if I'm abusive. <laughs> and um, you know, it was always a fight to try and like, but we, with Lou at times, Lou was able to pull performance out of him. Lou's slap was actually real. The first one was actually real. I, I couldn't hear it out of my ear for like a second. I'm like, what the hell just happened? And, and I didn't have the status or clout that Lou did, so I couldn't say it, but Lou could, I couldn't. So those were the hardest scenes. So, yeah. I just want to say, I came to this show not knowing what to expect. Mm -hmm. Good. In fact, I bumped into you just outside buying a ticket. Yeah. I know Dash's work. You had a brilliant, pardon me, <laughs> movie. Thank I was you. blown away. Mm -hmm. Everybody you. here probably has been touched by this subject. I'm going to get choked up talking about it. So powerful. Thank you. Thank just you. brilliant. Bravo. Thank uh, you. Uh, bravo. Thank you so much. We yes. had the largest child welfare agency see this movie. We brought 15 kids up from Juvenile Hall to the Napa Valley Film Festival, and it shifted them. The probation officers told me that the energy shifted them because they saw someone else had their back. It's, it's been hard sometimes for me because we all have a responsibility to share our love, and we all have a responsibility to recognize our privilege and give back. Uh, so Help for Children, which is the largest foundation in the world for child abuse prevention and treatment, uh, wants to host a gala screening in New York, and they're collaborating with New Yorkers for Children, which is foster care in New York. They don't collaborate because they compete for the same donors, and uh, that's really beautiful of them. And uh, I have some bands back there, if anyone wants to take them, that have uh, just, a, just a trust or struggle band um, with Quest on it, and I'm hopeful that eventually we could create a movement to raise money for these organizations because they're doing really good work and they're humble and they don't have our support yet and I would like to support them and, and create a movement around this that. This film's gonna help it so much and thanks for being real in those scenes with Lou. Oh, thank you. And yeah. lastly, yeah. like that is, that is so powerful. Thank you so much. That means so world. All of it mattered so much. It was so real. And, thank uh, you. And the rawness of it was absolutely essential. Thank you, that's a huge compliment. And uh, just one more thing before anybody leaves, there are postcards with Tim's top 10 principles to live by, so feel free to grab them. And please pass them along to anyone you see out there. Spread the word. It's screening on Wednesday, and it would be great to get this theater filled and let people know about it. Yes? So I have um, one is